Hello, welcome back to Linux. It is good to be back. We're now going to look at mounting devices in Linux, a traditional viewpoint and also a, a little bit of an alternative approach to doing that. So I'm going to go over and install Raspbian because I've got some questions about Raspberry Pis out there and let's see if we can get Raspbian to mount some devices. We'll be looking at two different devices. One one's going to be an XFAT device. That's kind of the thing you go buy at Walmart and you plug it in and it's usually formatted XFAT. And the other we're gonna use, let's say you have a Linux formatted device and you wanna plug that in via USB and use that. And I'll just use the second extended file system fourth edition or fourth extended for that one. So let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna see me install Raspbian over here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that on the screen so you'll be able to walk through that a bit and click. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose, let's see if I can choose, oops, there we go. Let me click into the window there. I'm gonna choose um, British English. Is that, what we, is that what we want? No, I want American English. Let's go up there and choose that. All right, we're gonna walk through the install really fast here. This is not an install video, so I'm not gonna sit there too much and uh, dwell on the install, but this is a mounting video, so we're gonna pop right over to the mounting scene. We're gonna use everything over there, finish partitioning, go ahead and write the changes to the disk and let this thing get started on the install. It should only take a couple of minutes for the install. If it gets hung up anywhere, or if there is an error that occurs, you're gonna to need to check your download file and make sure that that thing is working. And when I say check it, uh, you're probably gonna need to look at the SHA sum or the MD5 sum from wherever you downloaded that file to be sure that ISO is okay. Okay, if you got to this point, it's asking you to install the Grub Boot Loader, and we do want to do that. So you're gonna say yes. We're gonna click, yes, we do wanna do that there and let install that. Now the device for the bootloader, we're gonna go ahead and choose what it found right there. So we're gonna choose that dev SDA, let it install it to the root of the drive, that dev SDA, we don't want to uh, choose a partition there. Once it's done, we can go ahead and choose continue and let this thing reboot. We'll bring this back online and there you have an installation of Raspbian inside a virtual machine. Now, if you've got this far with Raspbian, then you can go ahead and choose whatever settings you want and um, use US English right there. Selecting next and I'll let this thing get started. Now, I will not be doing these mounts through the GUI. I'll be using the command line for all this. So as I go through the command line, then I'm gonna go ahead and you see password, password's my password there. As I go through the command line, um, which was this update, no, skip that you'll be able to see what you do from the command line. I will not be using it from here. I will be secure shelling in. So over here, my username is pi. So look over and we can cat Etsy password. Oops, Etsy password. And you'll see that we've got probably pi in there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. First user in the system. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, enable SSH. So we can do a sudo s and then do a service SSH start to see if SSH is included. It is, fantastic. So now we have SSH running and I'm gonna go ahead and remotely connect into this system for the rest of this video. Okay, so we can see that I'm here logged into a Raspberry Pi, so it would seem, but it's actually not. This is Raspbian running inside a virtual machine right now, but it's the same thing. It'll give you the same type of environment. We're gonna be go ahead and we're gonna create a couple of drives. We're gonna mount those disks, and then we're going to look at how to mount those manually, how to mount those automatically through FSTAB, how to go ahead and create an Etsy RC local file on there is to mount them through Etsy RC local and how to also mount them through cron tab just in case they did not mount and that's going to get into a little scripting. So each of those sections of the video will be in different places, uh, but the actual mounting portion is going to start probably around five minutes. Now, the very first thing that I want to do is I want to move my bash prompt over here. I want to get that off of the uh, off of this regular kind of what it is right now. And I wanna grab my my prompt from uh, from GitHub over there. And if you wanna do that, you can certainly use my prompt. It is available to everybody and it's it's free. 
So there, now I've got that. It tells me how much free RAM I have, what my IP address is. And I got this little, uh, you know, it tells me what OS I'm running. So if I'm running FreeBSD or, or a Unix system or a Linux system, etc. So now that I've done that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the devices. So LSBLK, on LSBLK, you can see I've got SDA on here right now. It's an eight gig disk, eight gig disk. Now over here, I'm also gonna do a BLK ID. And these are a couple of things that you might wanna know for setting a UUID. Now let's go ahead and add those, well, what we're gonna say are USB drives to this Raspberry Pi. We're gonna add one USB drive for Windows and one USB drive for Linux, and then we're going to mount those. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, so I've added those drives. I plugged in the USB, you know, kind of plugged in the USB devices there. And as we look over at it, we see we got two USB devices now connected. One showed up as SDB and the other is SDC. Now we're gonna go ahead and format those things. So we're gonna say like the first one, that SDB, that's just gonna be like a uh, regular Windows drive. So we're gonna go uh, mkfs.xfat over here and hopefully xfat's included if it's not we'll we'll have to add it in there we'll give it a name of win store and call that one sdb and it says i don't know what that is and here's where i have to get to adding some file systems in here so um, adding a file system in you can do that uh, in the future so what i'm going to do is instead is go ahead and do a vfat you just need to install and let's see if yeah there we go all right oops i'm not root <laughs> All right, we need to pop over as root over here. And uh, whenever you do that, then you are going to get your um, your bash prompt that you had earlier. So I'm gonna copy that bash prompt right over here to the root directory. And then I'm gonna source that thing so I can source my bash RC and get that back. Okay, so now I'm back over here, I'm root, and I'm gonna run this command once again. What I'm gonna do is just highlight that and middle click, and we'll see if that thing runs. And it says, hey, there are no partitions to find. Now, because there are no partitions to find, we'll have to actually set a label. So we're gonna use part D for that. Dev SDB, we're gonna say MK label MS DOS, like that. Then we'll do that same thing. Instead, we're gonna make a partition for it. Primary, 0% to 100%. We're gonna use that entire drive, that, that partition. There we go, now we have a partition on there. And uh, if we do LSB okay again, you can now see that we do have a partition on B. Now we do need to do the same thing on C. So we'll go over here to C and we'll go ahead and make that. And it's okay to make it MS-DOS even though we're using it for uh, Linux, it is not gonna make a difference here. So there we go, like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to format that thing. We're gonna, not gonna do the drive like that, we're gonna do the partition in it. And there we go. And it tells us, hey, watch out, lowercase labels may not work properly with DOS or Windows. Yeah, that's right. Old DOS system, old Windows systems may make that all capital. Mm, that's okay. So we went ahead and made that into a VFAT system. And over here, we're gonna go ahead and make this one into an X, uh, let's say the extended force system and make that Lin store instead of Win store and make that C1 like that. Okay. Invalid blocks. And so what it's probably telling me is that it's actually a capital L or something like that, yeah. So over there for the label, the label is a capital L on the MKFS EXT4 and it's a lowercase n on the VFAT uh, like that right there. So just keep that in mind. Now we'll look over here. We can see we have those two devices. We have those USBs plugged in. They're formatted. Now, if you don't wanna format your USB, don't format it. Okay, those two steps right there were formatting. So if you don't want to format it, I'll go over your history and, and we'll grip uh, the MKFS. So we'll just look at that really fast. If you don't want to wipe the drive, then don't do this step right here in this step right there. So don't do that if you don't want to wipe the drive. Okay, so now we see those drives, we want to mount this thing. Let's go ahead and create a mount point. So I'm gonna go ahead and create it over in, um, oh, well, I'll just make it over here. Home, we'll make a directory and we'll call this a Lin store like this. And I'll make a directory home win store like that. So now if I go LL home, you can see I've got Lin store and win store. Now I can go mount dev 
SD, and this is depending on which one we want. I'm going to choose SDB1, which is my wind store, and I'm going to mount that to home wind store, just like that. Now that is now mounted. So if I type mount, we can see that this right there is mounted. Dev SDB1 is mounted there. So if I want to do the same thing, I do SDC1, and I can pop that over into Lin Store. And now if I do LSBLK, you can see that both of those are now mounted over there. So that is mounting. That's the first step, manually mounting a drive. By the way, all the details in this video are in the, in the description. So feel free to look at that anytime. So we manually mount it. So let's go ahead and unmount it. So we're gonna U-mount home and I'm gonna do star store and try to unmount both of those. Let's see if that worked. LSB okay. Sure enough, neither drive is mounted now. So let's do the first step. We're gonna mount this in F-stab. So VI Etsy F-stab. Pop it in over here and it says, oh no, we need Vim, which we absolutely need Vim. So let's go to app get install Vim get that thing installed really fast, and then we can uh, carry on. Okay, got Vim installed, so we're gonna do a VI Etsy F-Stab, pop into there, and you can see that they're using UUIDs over here. You don't need to use UUIDs. You can just say dev SDB1, where we want to mount it. We wanna mount it over in de home wind store, like that. What kind of file system is it? This is actually a VFAT system, and uh, as far as anything else, we can just choose defaults, right there and we can choose no error just in case it's not there it won't like kill our system and then we choose a zero zero if you want uh, if if you want to go through and mount that thing uh, make sure it dumps any kind of kernel information or make sure it doesn't check this pass or anything of that sort so same thing home and we'll do lin store lin store like this this one is ext4 uh, defaults no error uh, zero zero. I'm gonna I'm gonna verify uh, that no error right there, but we'll find out soon enough. Okay, so we saved that. Now notice it is not mounted. So if I should just be able to type mount home, I'll put wind store there, and we'll see. And it's like mm, I'm sorry that I don't know what that is. So I've got to fix that right over there on that system. And on this one it says mm, same thing. I'm sorry I don't know what you're doing with that system. So let's go look at FSTAB and see what we did. So over here, it's saying mm, very possibly that that system, very, look at that, defaults, misspellings are, are bad. So we don't want to misspell anything. I for insert here. Let's see if we can get that to work. Defaults, and I'll take off the no error. And we'll try that again. So watch your spelling. Bam, there we go. Lin store is mounted and wind store is mounted. So now if I go over here and do an LSB OK, you can see that both of those are mounted. So that is working great. This will also mount when the drive starts. So whenever you boot your system, it will mount. So I can go ahead and kill that. So you mount home star store. I'm going to unmount both of those. Make sure they unmounted. Super. Now the next thing I can do is I can go set up rc.local and tell it to mount my drive. So over here I can say mount dev SD was it SDB1 to where home wind store like that and mount slash dev SDC1 to home Lin store. And I can do it like this. That way, when this computer starts up, it's going to read the rc.local and it's going to try to remount these drives. Now, if they're already mounted, you know, we could create a little logic. That's what we're going to do next time uh, to make sure that if it's mounted, it doesn't remount. But in this case, it'll go through and it'll try to mount that drive. So it'll mount those drives for us in rc.local. Now, I don't want that. I've got an F stab right now. So I'm going to go through and comment that out right there. Uh, and the last one would be in VI Etsy cron tab. So over in cron tab, we would tell it to mount these drives. Now, if we're going to do it in cron tab, then we might want to make sure that if it's mounted, we don't go through and remount again. But what we're going to do in this one is we're going to say open a new line. We're going to say at reboot. Oops. At reboot when 
it's at any kind of time it reboots root and what do we want to run we're going to mount dev sdb1 to oh what is it home win store and we can just do that and say mount sd uh, mount dev sdc1 to home lin store there you go now then on reboots now it will go through and mount your disks now you need to make sure that mount is in your path so this is user local s bin user local bin s bin bin yeah it's in there so we're good with that but that right there would go through and mount your drive as well so i'm going to comment that out because i don't want that to happen and i'm also going to go out and i'm going to comment out the f stab over here Ooh, before we comment out the f stab how do you know your block id well let's look at that let's do a b okay id block id you can see b1 right there when store label is this label right here that UUID is right there so if we use the UUID we just copy that portion right there highlight it you hit control shift C if you want to you right click choose copy or just by highlighting it it's kind of just middle click there then we go over here for a dev SDB we can click and we can paste that thing in there hit control shift V for pasting it in there make sure that that's in the right place and then I'll get rid of dev SDC too what was dev SDC that was right here and now we're going to use UUIDs for this but you don't have to use UUIDs especially on a small system that you always have set up the same way all right so over here click and we've got that going just like that so now if we want to go through a mount again, we can mount home wind store, bing, and a lens store, and bing. There you go. So look at those. They're mounted again. This time they're mounted via UUIDs. I hope that this, via, uh, this video helps you out. I'm going to copy the commands that I use down in here. Um, I might even throw Vim in there. I don't know. And uh, that way you can see kind of the process I walked through and even the configuration files that I used as much as YouTube will let me copy that into it. Look forward to talking to you in the future and I hope that uh, everybody has a wonderful time.